Hello and welcome to my video. Today I'm going to be talking about 12 volt batteries in the Fisker Ocean. If it is about that time for you to replace your 12 volt battery, this is the video for you. I'm going to be covering the options that you have, including regular lead acid and alternative forms of batteries. So let's get started. There are several choices of batteries for the Fisker Ocean. The first most common that we know for ice cars is a flooded battery, which is a traditional 12 volt lead acid battery. And it's usually composed of six cells that have 2.1 volts each. So a 12 volt battery is usually closer to 12.6 volts than 12. However, the Ocean uses an AGM, 12 volt battery. On this diagram, we have the regular flooded lead acid battery on the left side and the AGM on the right side. So the AGM or absorbent glass mat utilizes thin fiberglass mats between the battery plates. These mats absorb and hold the battery's acid, which makes the battery spill proof and maintenance free. The mats also ensure that the electrolyte remains in close contact with the plates enhancing the battery's efficiency. They have a sealed design unlike the traditional flooded batteries. This means that they do not require topping up with distilled water, making them maintenance free. It also prevents leaks and spills, even if the battery casing is damaged. The main requirements for the Fisker Ocean is that the battery has a size of H4, so that it will fit into the battery holder inside the ocean's motor compartment. The battery measures roughly 7.5 inches high by 8.1 inches long by 6.9 inches wide and weighs about 34 pounds. It is possible to use a smaller H3 size battery, but it will offer less capacity, which is not recommended. The size of H3 is 6.9 inches long by 6.9 inches wide by 7.5 inches high. So the only difference is the length. Larger sizes like the H5 will not fit into the area since it's too long. You'd have to modify the battery case in order to do that. And some people have done that and fit the larger battery in. But for the average owner, I don't really recommend doing that. By the way, the H5 size is 9.6 inches long by 6.9 inches wide by 7.5 inches high. So all of the options that I recommend have a 50 ampere hour battery size, which is the same size as the original battery that came with the car. I have a number of recommended batteries and the first one right here is the Die Hard EV battery, and its part number is H4XEV. And this is the most common one that I have seen people been using, and it's readily available at many different auto parts stores. Uh, the example I have here is from Advanced Auto Parts, and you can see that the price is around $270. The price may vary but that's roughly what it costs and what I've seen in my area. The next one on my list is the Superstart Platinum AGM, and that has a part number of 140RPLT. And this one is at O'Reilly Auto Parts, and it is also very, I would say, commonly available and you can pick one up at a local store if you happen to have one in your area. The next one I have on the list is from Interstate Battery, and this is the MTX H4. This one is $275, and this one I think is available online on the interstatebatteries.com website. They also may be available uh, locally in auto parts stores too, but I have not seen any in my area. So this one is from their website. Next on the list is the U Plus. It's the AGM-L50-UP. 
and I have this as an Amazon listing. I did purchase this one back in October and it has been sitting in my garage. I most likely will be installing this in my car when my current battery is at the point that it needs to be replaced. Of all the batteries I've seen so far, this is the least expensive at $140. And I have seen it sometimes go on sale for even less than that. I'm pretty sure I picked mine up around $125 or so when it was on sale back in October. There are some concerns that people have mentioned that it is a Chinese sourced battery but it is using the same manufacturer as the one that was included with the Fisker Ocean. So hard to say, uh, there have been issues with the OEM battery, but I think that is mostly due to the transportation of the car itself from Gross, Austria to the US. And I think also the original software was not very good with maintaining the 12 volt battery. And I think the latest versions of the software are treating it much better. But I must admit, for most owners, the battery has been probably strained the first six to 12 months. And I would suggest if the battery is showing frequently at 12 volts or less, you probably should be replacing it. Most of these batteries that I have seen have three-year warranties, and this one is no different. So I, I have no problem purchasing the Amazon one to try out. And if I do have a problem with it, it does have a warranty. So I, uh, I don't consider that an issue for me personally. And there's probably other AGM type battery options in the H4 size. And if you find any, that size is what I recommend using with your Fisker Ocean. I have links for all of these options in the video description. I highly recommend using a donor battery or 12 volt battery charger to keep the car powered during the replacement process. You will be able to keep the settings like the doggy windows, and therefore less issues may occur. You can see my video on this right over here. Besides the use of AGM batteries, there are a couple of other options. However, I don't recommend them to the average owner. If you want quick and easy, I recommend just getting an AGM 12 volt lead acid battery. It's known to work. However, it may not last as long as usual, it could last 12 months. There are alternative batteries that may last longer. One of them is the lithium iron phosphate or LIFE PO4, and the other is sodium ion. These two types of batteries are relatively new and are being used in some EVs. And there are a couple different companies that do sell these types of batteries. I have one listed right here. This is omu.com and they sell both the lithium iron phosphate as well as the sodium ion batteries for a number of different vehicles. On this page, you can see that they have different sizes. They do have, from what I've seen, H4 size for the Fisker Ocean. Another company is called Lithium Moto and they also recently started selling the sodium batteries and they also carry the lithium iron phosphate as well. I am gonna be getting a battery in from Lithium Moto in the next couple of weeks and I'm gonna be testing it on my car and I'm gonna let you know how that works. I'll probably do a video on the installation of it and let you know how it works on my vehicle and I'm pretty sure I can get a discount for owners that are interested in purchasing it. So stay on the lookout for that video. It should be an interesting one. Some of the differences between the lithium iron phosphate and the sodium ion is that the operating temperatures, operating voltages, and safety issues are better on the sodium ion from what I have seen. 
Both of them have very similar energy densities. The cycle life or lifespan for sodium ion is equal than or greater than iron phosphate and much longer than lead acid. As far as weight goes, sodium is about 20% higher than iron phosphate, but is still much less than lead acid. So basically about 11 to 15 pounds for a sodium ion battery, maybe about 10 to 12 for an iron phosphate. And the regular AGM is about 34 pounds. So a pretty big difference in weight. Internal resistance of sodium is slightly higher than iron phosphate and more similar to the lead acid algorithms, which may be important for charging the battery. Environmental, the sodium is much more friendly and sustainable than the lead acid or the lithium options. So that's it. Basically, I just want to give you a brief summary of your options for 12 volt batteries that you can use with the Fisker Ocean. If you're interested in any of these, please see the links in the video description. As I mentioned, I'm going to be getting the sodium ion battery in later this month, and I'm going to be testing it on my car. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. If you have any other suggested batteries that I didn't list in this video, please leave them also in the comments. I'd be very interested to see what those are. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.